fame and family. First, we take you into the world of Clint and Kyle Eastwood. Now, Clint, of course, needs no introduction, but his son does. Kyle's a young musician desperate to make it on his own merit, but can he do it in the shadow of a superstar? Does this guy strike a chord with you? Here's a clue. His dad's the one tinkling the ivories in the background. Yes, it's Clint Eastwood, jamming with his jazz musician son, Kyle. He's trying to showcase Kyle's style, but ends up, as always, stealing the show himself. That's how it is when you're the son of an American icon. It's a blessing and a curse. One, two, one, two. True, it's given Kyle's career a big jump start. He's been able to attract good musicians like these, who know the name will sell CDs and bring in an audience. But here's the curse. No matter how hard Cal works to be his own man, he'll always live in the shadow of a Hollywood legend. We visited father and son at Clint's Mission Ranch in Monterey. Do you think the name recognition is a cross for him to bear? It might possibly be at times. At times it, it'll be good for him, and times it'll be uh, uh, something to bear. Does that bother you? So it's always been there ever since I can remember, and I'm sure it always will be. So it's it's not something I really let bother me, you know. So it's uh, I'm I'm okay with. It. I've gotten I've gotten used to it. <laughs> he could change it to Ginsburg. Can... <laughs> Kyle can thank his dad for introducing him to jazz in the first place. Clint has always been a passionate fan. Father and son were regulars at the famous Monterey Jazz Festival while Kyle was still in diapers. How old was he when you first brought him here? I think he came just wrapped in a blanket. As a kid, Kyle remembers being in the presence of the greats, and with Clint's influence, going backstage to meet them. I remember seeing Buddy Rich. I remember going back and meeting him, and Joe Williams yeah. a few times meeting yeah. him. And um, I think like Ella Fitzgerald. Sometime about 50 years from now, somebody will say, you saw Ella Fitzgerald live? Jazz was the glue that bonded Kyle with his absentee father, who was away on the road for most of Kyle's younger years, and then left his wife Maggie and the family when his son was only 10. You must have missed him. Yeah, no, I, I, I definitely miss him sometimes, but uh, I don't ever really remember like being consciously being angry about it. I mean, there was, like I said, there was certain times where, where it would have been nice to have, you know, my whole family around for, for a certain occasion or certain something, but. Um, but um, I don't know what we spent a lot. I'm happy for the times that we did spend together. Any regrets about the fact that you were away so much of the time that Kyle was growing up? Oh yeah, absolutely. You do miss out a, a, a lot. Uh, that's the trouble with uh, a career, especially a career like uh, the acting profession, because you uh, you're always uh, there's that old adage, you know, that your last job is your last job, and or what have you. But when you see the the brass ring sort of coming your way, you figure, gee, I better do this and because I've got a family to support. And uh, it's not like um, accounting or something where I can be doing it when I'm uh, 50, 60, 70 years old or whenever. Spoken by the man who's still making films at the age of 69. OK, action. You play it. I'll show you how to turn it. I hold the E string down on the fifth fret right there at the top. He gave Kyle a taste of that showbiz life by casting him in the movie Honky Tonk Man when he was 14 years old. Is he a good kid? Nah, he's a bum. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Yeah, he's a terrific kid. One thing that he's always had that I've always been proud of is this great sense of humor, and so we always have a lot of good laughs. Is he a good father? <laughs> yeah, no, he's a very good father. You might have done better, but you could have done worse, too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Could you talk to him about girls? Could you confide in him? Could you trust him? I don't uh, think he was hanging out with too many of the girls I was going out with, so I think it was... <laughs> <laughs> he was afraid to introduce him to me. 
I don't blame him. I didn't want to bring up any girls. Uh, now, with that kind of competition, everyone wondered, would Clint Jr. follow in Dad's footsteps? Would he have that kind of charisma? He did show an early talent for being a ham. But it was in music that he saw a chance to have his own identity. Maybe he could even escape the inevitable comparisons with the old man. So he packed up and left La La Land for the New York jazz scene. The first step to legitimacy. So yeah, on the beginning of Watch Watch, actually there's no horns then on the intros. Right. He writes his own arrangements for his band. That adds to his cachet. And he got noticed by tough New York manager Marianne Topper. She signed him up three years ago. Her job, to make the celebrity kid just as famous for his music as he is for his name. Obviously, I looked at Kyle Eastwood probably the same way that a lot of people who are in the jazz world looked at Kyle Eastwood the first time and, that and is? heard with great skepticism. Uh, this is a young man who obviously is endowed with the name Eastwood. This is an icon. There will be uh, occasions when that is almost primary in my mind uh, to overcome the name, the celebrity, and work legitimately uh, within the music industry to establish his credibility there. So far, the reviews are lukewarm. Critics have damned Kyle with faint praise, calling his playing merely competent. They say it's sad but true. The son of Clint has no stage presence. One even suggested he ask his dad for some tips. What do you do with that? Take the heat, as they say, or get out of the kitchen. We're aware of that heat, but we're also aware of the great reviews in Chicago, a great review in Toronto. All I want is for the people to recognize that he can be his own man, just like Clint was. They're independent critters. They have a great sense of themselves. It's a very quiet sense of, of themselves, but they're very grounded, I believe. Clint says Kyle is a chip off the old block. They're both shy introverts. He's very much like me. He kind of keeps uh, a lot of his uh, feelings to himself. He uh, is outgoing with people he knows, but it probably becomes more difficult to express himself with people he doesn't know, and uh, I've always been that way. To be an, a, sort of an introverted person in my business is almost uh, uh, unheard of, but it's kind of uh, the way it panned out. Now here's one venue where the reviews are guaranteed to be glowing. Kyle is playing at the Tony Pebble Beach Country Club, which, by the way, Clint and some investors bought last summer for a cool billion. Kyle's most devoted fans are here tonight. His mom, Maggie, Clint's first wife. And Clinton wife number two, Dina Ruiz, a local television personality. They have a two-year-old daughter together. When you watch him perform, are you able to separate yourself? You're not the father watching him, you're an objective listener? Oh, yeah, no, I can, yeah, sure. So what do you think but, of But, you know, naturally, you're, you're, I, I'm proud of the fact that he's... Well, I, what do I think? I think he plays extremely well. If he's like me, he'll maybe outlive his critics. <laughs> <laughs> you realize, of course, the reviews for your son's first CD are better than the reviews for your first movie. Oh, well, that's good. <laughs> that's good. My first uh, movie's probably... Uh, it took a while for people to understand what was going on there. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> they were ahead of their time. Yes. <laughs> they, they, were ahead, they were ahead of the audience. They were, I guess uh, so. Or, or behind the audience. One the other. <laughs> Would it be possible to suggest that you're living out your dad's fantasy? He probably well, is. I, mean, <laughs> they, they probably, uh, I never became a player because I just sort of dabbled with it as a kid. I never uh, had the discipline. Consequently, I became sort of a Jack of all trades, master of none. I could go in a saloon and play a couple numbers and somebody would buy me a free beer or something, but that's about as good as it got. Uh, secretly, if somebody said, what would you rather do, um, act in a, a major play or be able to play like Art Tatum or something, you might say, eh, that's such a tough decision. I, mean, <laughs> I, I might take the latter. The prestigious Montreal International Jazz Festival. Musicians are here by invitation only. 
Kyle is doing something his dad can only dream of, maybe even envy. On this night, center stage belongs to Kyle. But how many people have come to check out the Eastwood kid? Does he have the famous jawline? Is he as cool as his dad? Will his music ever be good enough to make them forget about his famous father? As long as he keeps the attitude he has, which is uh, just play the best you can. If anybody likes it, fine. If not, uh, don't let the door hit him in the rear end on the way out. Now, because Clint so rarely gives interviews, we took advantage of our time with him. In a moment, the quintessential leading man has a few secrets to share. The public has no idea, <laughs> do they? No idea. <laughs> and it should be kept that way. <laughs> probably, probably. <laughs>
Oh, my. What? You put Havarti on your salad. Whether it's Havarti, cheddar, or feta in salad, when you add a little cheese, it makes a big difference. All right, people, try to stay calm. Is that Havarti? When you've got cheese, you've got choice. There's a very special ring inside every people's jewelers this year, with the millennium set in diamonds inside the band. It's an exquisite half-carat round diamond solitaire in 18-carat gold for a special price of only $19.99. The perfect ring when you're ready to make her your valentine forever. Exclusively at People's, the diamond store. We couldn't let this pass, an uncommon opportunity to spend some time with the elusive, very private Clint Eastwood. What are his opinions on movie violence, gun control, and living in the public eye? He's a man of few words. And many talents. Clint Eastwood. In the world of movies, he's done it all. Number one box office star, Oscar-winning director, producer, composer. There's even a website devoted to famous Clint Eastwood lines. Go ahead, make my day. All these famous one-liners, right? Make my day. Of all those one-liners, do you have a favorite? Well, yeah. no, I don't. Uh, I had a, uh, when, when I read uh, in the script, uh, Go Ahead, Make My Day, uh, I knew that it would be the key line of that particular movie. I didn't realize that it would be as quoted as it has become, but. Look at this. We, we got this off the internet. Look at all these famous one liners. Yeah, they, they go on. Oneliner.com or something. <laughs> Of those, is there anything that comes to mind that you can do for us now? It's a setup. Oh, I can't Clint, do them now. Setup. I can't do them now. I get a lot of money for that. Oh. <laughs> okay. We don't and, have that uh, kind of money. We, uh, it's funny because I have a two-year-old um, daughter, and she squints her eyes and does go ahead and make my day. Now, I think her mother's been putting her up to this. His best lines and his face are enshrined in American myth. He plays the maverick with a violent sense of justice. Does he see himself as a role model? Nobody's gonna come. You're still thought of, I think, and it would be a fair comment to make, as the man most likely to play the sort of the tough, mean, the gun-toting character, if you were to characterize I, I, and, I don't and label know. you. In recent years, I, I've probably... Uh, You've changed. You've diversified. I, uh, Losing the girl more frequently in the as I get older. Wait a minute, Bridges, Bridges, you got <laughs> the girl Bridges in that one. Madison County, no, I lost there too. Well, you, but, you, you, uh, had a, you got her heart. <laughs> but I didn't uh, wield the gun or what have you, and uh, you know, at some point in your life, you uh, you, you realize that not only uh, is that something you've been there, done that, but you want to reach out to other things, and you know, naturally. Uh, you know, violent movies uh, have gone to such extreme lately. If it's going to be just pyrotechnics and blowing people away, uh, I think somebody else should do that. But there's a whole issue and a whole debate going out on now about Hollywood and, the, and violence, and certainly mm -hmm. in light of the shootings mm -hmm. uh, in, in Colorado. Um, there's a movement afoot calling for government regulation to curb violence in films. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about that? Well, I'm not nuts about it. any kind of government regulations. The government is, uh, has a rough time doing anything uh, correctly, much less regulating anything. But, and and I, I'm for f freedom, but uh, yeah, movies and televisions deal with a lot of uh, violence that probably could be better off without. What if you were to make a movie or there was a movie that you were in and someone got the idea from having watched you? How would that make you I wouldn't feel? like that. I, I wouldn't like that. I, I know that that there's a lot of uh, yeah, there's a lot of mayhem out there. But and I wouldn't I wouldn't want my movies emulated. Uh, but I've always tried to play. Whenever I played a violent person, I always tried to play play on the side of right and the side of victims and the side of uh, 
of uh, society eventually, even if in a renegade sort of way. Did you see all your father's films? Quite a few of them, yeah. I grew up visiting the set and seeing how they were made, so I knew it was, you know, just a, a, a fairy tale, you know. <laughs> <laughs> this is not real life, son. <laughs> how dare you call my <laughs> film fairy tales? <laughs> Is he a fairy tale prince? Hardly. Let's just fire one off to see where we are. Okay. On the outside, he may look like the most regular, easygoing guy in the world. But even Clint admits he's really more like his on screen roles. Your characters were often portraits of tormented men with intense inner lives and little ability to communicate with others. Mm -hmm. How different are you from those characters? Not at all. That they were easy roles to play. <laughs> <laughs> now they, uh, you know, they, you, you always want to do, uh, you always want to play roles that have tremendous conflict, inner or or outer, for that matter. Uh, conflict being the basis of drama, and and any inner conflict you can carry with it that always makes the characters more interesting rather than just play them straight ahead as. Yeah, in many ways you are the antithesis of the, the Hollywood uh, actor hero. You may appear that way on camera, and yet your private life is very, very private. Was that a conscious choice on your part to live that way? Yes. Um, I don't enjoy talking about myself or my personal feelings particularly, and uh, I never have done it to the degree that some people do, and, uh, and uh, so you live with what you are. I can see. The one area of his private life that he really doesn't want to talk about? His love life. Living in the public arena, you know, as much as you try to keep your personal persona private, people will write things, people will say things. Clint is not into being tied down, this person said. He's never been faithful to the women in his life, but he has such a way with women they never believe he's unfaithful. Is that... Fair, accurate, inaccurate? Well, let's not, I don't know uh, a person saying that, what knowledge they would have to say that, because what do they know? I mean, is that somebody that's close to me that knows about my relationships? Or, or uh, I, I think uh, probably not. That's probably just somebody uh, taking a shot. So, well, let them take a shot. That's okay. What's their life like? You know, cruel people usually don't last too long. Somewhere along the line, they get nailed. They nail themselves. <laughs> karma, karma works. <laughs> <laughs> or, the, or the person they criticize outlives them. Right? Yeah, the person, yeah, they outlive. But you know, like karma works. So some people, some people believe in that. Eventually, people get tired of people who are cruel. We've seen that a lot of times over the years. They just, they just sort of wear out their welcome. You got act. You gotta be positive when you're starting a brand new family in your golden years. Two-year-old Morgan is Clint's seventh child, and the tough guy has turned to mush. Do you watch Barney with your daughter? <laughs> uh, uh -oh, yes. Yes. <laughs> this is a revelation. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, watch so anything it, it with passes. This, this, this is the headline. <laughs> I see it now. I watch Barney, Teletubbies, you name it. I, 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 can, uh, I, I know the themes to all of them. Uh, the public has no idea. <laughs> Do they? No idea. <laughs> and it should be kept that way. <laughs> probably, probably. No idea.